Good day, everyone, and welcome back to Adventures with Parker. Today, we are visiting another haunt, this time, Hollow Weekends at Cedar Point. Now, I've experienced other Cedar Fair haunts in the form of Halloween Haunt at Canada's Wonderland, but I've never experienced Hollow Weekends. And uh, it seems a little bit different than what I'm used to, but still pretty cool. And uh, they have mazes, scare zones, shows, all that good stuff you would expect at a haunt along with all of Cedar Point's award-winning coasters. So I think we're in for a good night. I'm so excited. So without any further ado, let these spooky adventures begin. Alright, we're starting things off sweet. This is the s'mores fudge from the French Quarter Confections right off the front gate. And oh my goodness, it looks so good. I love s'mores in the fall, so I think we're in for a real treat, literally. Bon appetit! Mm. As uh, someone who's a big fan of both fudge and s'mores, this, uh, this gets a pass for me. Oh my goodness, look how adorable the Kitty Kingdom sign is with the Frankenstein and all the pumpkins. Looks like they do trick-or-treating here for the kids. Yeah, that's super cute. <laughs> Okay, so it's about seven o'clock now. The park opened at six, but uh, something interesting about Halloween weekends is that the mazes don't actually open until eight o'clock. So yeah, I guess we have an hour to do some other things around the park, maybe ride a few rides, and uh, the spooky stuff will begin momentarily. Okay, so apparently the park does an opening Scaramonious show, uh, which I didn't realize. I didn't do a lot of research coming into today, so unfortunately I just missed it. Uh, but this will be something to keep in mind for the next time I come. But we have our first monsters. and keeping on brand with Halloween, our first ride of the day is going to be Rougarou, Cedar Point's floorless coaster. I love how the pathway leading up to Rougarou has you like going over this lagoon and creek. It has all these lily pads and it just makes you feel like you're out in the marsh. It really just adds to the atmosphere of the ride. It's great. Ooh, this is cool. They have some fortune tellers. Yeah. I think the line is a little too long for my taste, but maybe I'll come back to it later because that seems cool.
I want, I think. The following autumn is when they came back. Half human creatures creeping from the wilderness to seek revenge on the townsfolk who banished them. Whoa, hello. I didn't even see her. of the night. Light on the bayou. Okay, look at this. We are in the Forbidden Frontier area of Cedar Point, which is part of the park I've never explored before, so that's kind of cool. Oh, okay, we just did our first maze of the night, Blood on the Bayou. This was an interesting one because it was entirely outdoors. It took up the uh, Forbidden Frontier area of the park. And yeah, it was pretty cool overall. It was different being outside and having such wide pathways. It felt almost like a half scare zone, half maze kind of setup. But I thought it worked really well. They incorporated a lot of different scenes and settings. Like there was like a meat shop, there was a trailer park, there was like just general swamp areas. And yeah, they had some really good scares going on. And there's an alligator, hold on. So yeah, all in all, I'd have to say I liked Blood on the Bayou. I will say it is a bit of a trek to get over there. Like they really make you walk from the main midway to get to where the maze starts. And uh, even now walking back, I'm still not technically out of the area. So be prepared to go on a hike, but it is well worth it. I do have to say it is one of those mazes that grew on me as it went on. I wasn't too sure of it at first, uh, but now coming out of it, I... Uh, I'm a fan. So I was just checking the map to see where my next maze was and uh, I just discovered that Blood on the Bayou is technically considered to be a scare zone. So it felt like a maze but uh, I can see how the park would make that distinction. Okay so our real first maze of the night is going to be Slaughterhouse right here uh, by Millennium Force. <laughs> Okay, we just did the slaughterhouse and that had to be one of the goriest phases I have ever done. Oh my goodness, that was so good. Did you pull uh, Yeah, and the, the detail in that maze was done really well too. I mean, it really felt like you were inside an actual slaughterhouse. And it was so freaky because there was a point where you clearly transitioned from a slaughterhouse for animals to like a slaughterhouse for humans. And yeah, it was nasty, but it was so good. Okay, we are in the Harvest Fear Scare Zone. <laughs> Ooh, fresh baked pies. That sounds good. It's like over here you can get kisses. Oh, what the heck? It's just a little peck. Well, normally I love kitty cat kisses, but uh, I don't trust. I don't trust that guy. Hello! Oh, sorry! <laughs> oh my goodness! It's a singing fever! Okay, our next maze of the day is Freak Show. 
looks like it's a circus, carnival themed maze. Always a classic at these times. Okay, I just did the freak show, which was really, really well done. I mean, those kind of carnival, circus-themed haunts are kind of to be expected at these kind of events. But yeah, Cedar Point did a really good job with theirs. There's a lot of detail and there's a lot of variety in the way they did it too. I mean, they kind of had some of the uh, like all of Curiosity stuff mixed in with like circus tents and circus trailers and freak show characters. They just kind of took all of the elements of that theme that worked really well and put it together really nicely and it just created this smooth, cohesive uh, experience and so many scare actors too. Um, I'm finding that the mazes are really well um, stocked for lack of a better word. I definitely got a lot of scares in both the Slaughterhouse and Freak Show. So far, uh, I think Cedar Point's Hello Weekends is a hit for me. Of course, the other big appeal to Halloween weekends are the night rides. And I mean, the coasters are already amazing, but add in the fog and the darkness, it just makes the experience that much more fun and really gets you into the Halloween vibe. I uh, just did Maverick and Freak Show with uh, my friend Molly uh, and her boyfriend. And <laughs> Maverick is so fun. I, I can't get enough of it, especially at night. If you come to Cedar Points at night, a ride on Maverick is a must do. So Molly, thank you for joining me. Molly posts content from different theme parks on her Instagram. I'm going to link that down below and put her stuff on the screen. She is one of my favorite Instagram creators. So everyone go follow her. She is amazing. Okay, so I'm now on my way to Cornstalkers and it looks like it takes up the area normally occupied by their uh, River Rapids ride. I mean, it's still there, but I've never seen this part of the park before. And just like with Blood on the Bayou, they are making us walk to get to this scare zone. Oh my goodness, this is quite a hike. Am I going this way or this way? Here we go this way. This hold way. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which way do you think the cornfield is? <laughs> um, Tom! <laughs> Which way is the cornfield? That's a metal field if I ever could see one. Yeah, I was about yeah. to say, but... Go that way! Follow the pretty lights. Follow the... Follow the pretty okay. lights. Keep going. Okay. Okay. What are you doing? I believe in you. Okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> Hi, Lily. Hi. <laughs> I can see nothing. So foggy. <laughs> oh no. That laugh doesn't sound good. I don't trust the evil laugh. Oh boy. Oh, now it's dark again. Ah! Oh my god. Hello. <laughs> okay, it seems a little lighter in here. Oh, there's like different. Oh, okay, I think that's a boo hole. so many. Oh, I don't know where to go. Oh no. Okay. Ah! <laughs> of course they scare us just when we go into a big cloud of fog. I feel so lost right now. There's not even any diverting paths. Like it's all one way, but I still feel like I'm lost. <laughs> wow, this is long. I like it. Ah! Oh my god! <laughs> oh gosh! No. <laughs> ah! <laughs> right at the end, of course. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the best scares always happen as soon as I turn off my camera. Oh my goodness. But Cornstalkers 2.0, oh my goodness, that was. That was fun. <laughs> I was legit scared by that one. And not just in the sense of jump scares, but I really felt like I was lost. <laughs> I don't know, like, felt like I was in a cornfield and never coming out again. So that was, that was a fun experience. Um, and of course, as you guys know, I love corn stalkers at Wonderland. So it's kind of cool to see the sequel here at Cedar Point. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hershey Park? Is that you? So I was hoping to try the spicy corn and chorizo pizza here at Wagon Wheel, but I think I'm out of luck. That's disappointing. Well, when pizza gets you down, there's always cupcakes. 
cupcakes will never fail you. Okay, we have an hour left until the park closes. I have three more mazes to do, and I do want to see if I can get a ride on Steel Vengeance, but uh, I'm gonna do Bloodbath, which is up here by Steel Vengeance. And after that, there is another maze kind of over by the Gemini Magnum area that I really want to do. Then after that, maybe I will come back and do Steel Vengeance. I'll, I'll see how I'm feeling, but um, I might be missing out on a maze tonight, but that's okay. Whoa! <laughs> They've got all sorts of cowboys and outlaws here over by Steel Vengeance. Oh my goodness. Oh, Hello. <laughs> Okay, our next maze of the night is Bloodbath. Okay, I couldn't figure out where Bloodbath was, but if you're looking at Steel Vengeance in the sign, you're gonna hang a right and go towards this dark shadowy place. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> okay, Bloodbath. That was cool. That was very, very uh, similar to Club Blood from Canada's Wonderland, if anyone remembers that, and I'm sure it's been to other Cedar Fair haunts as well, but it was kind of fun to see that concept again. It wasn't exclusively vampires like Club Blood was. Like it had vampires and other kinds of monsters. So while I was in this neck of the woods, I had myself a bit of an epiphany. First of all, Steel Vengeance was a walk-on. Second, the maze that I really want to do is all the way at the front of the park. Steel Vengeance is all the way here at the back of the park. So I figured if I was going to ride it, I should do it now. Otherwise, I wouldn't have time to walk all the way there and all the way back. It would just, it wouldn't work. So yeah, I rode Steel Vengeance in the back row, which it's the most intense experience I've ever had on a coaster. I mean, I've done it before, but it's incredible every single time. And at night, night rides on Steel Vengeance, chef's kiss. I mean, I know this kind of makes me basic, but there's a reason Steel Vengeance is my number one. It is so good. Like if you ever want to hear me just whoop and shriek and scream with delight, ride Steel Vengeance with me, because that's exactly what you'll get for the full duration of that ride. It's so fun. Hello. Howdy. How are you this fine evening? Fantastic. How are you? I'm good. What are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> you look lost. A little bit, yeah. Didn't know. <laughs> hey, welcome to stay around here. Oh, okay. That's good. <laughs> we enjoy visitors. Okay, okay. Are you having a good time here in Tombstone? Of course I am. Alright. Seems like a very lovely settlement. That is the coolest animatronic I've ever seen at a haunt. So anyways, yes, we are on our way to the haunting of Eerie Estates, which I think will be the last thing we do tonight. I uh, doubt we'll have time for anything else after that. We'll see, but this was kind of the one maze I was most looking forward to. When I was reading the description online, it seemed to have a very um, interesting backstory. So I'm excited to check it out. And I mean, it also makes it kind of special that I'm saving this one thing I was most looking forward to uh, until the end. Yeah, it'll be the perfect way to end off the night. Oh 
my gourd. Would you look at this? <laughs> oh, that was a bad joke. But seriously, this is so cool. Like, imagine being this creative with fruit. <laughs> Look at all these floating pumpkins out by the Iron Dragon Lagoon. That's so cool. Simple telepathy, ESP, clairvoyance, spirit photography, telekinetic movement, full trans medium, Bigfoot, mermaids, unicorns. Oh my goodness, the haunting of Erie State is officially my all time favorite haunts maze that I've ever done. It was interesting because it seemed to have some parallels with Spirit Manor at Canada's Wonderland in the sense that it was like, yeah, that kind of phantom infested manor kind of feel. Except here there was a full on story where essentially you were going in as paranormal investigators um, and they had this pre-show at the beginning with this Ouija board, which uh, I'm sure there was some kind of like magnetic effect or something, but they actually made it move and it was so cool and so creepy too. <laughs> and then I mean, I've been saying this about most of the mazes here tonight, but the detail, oh my goodness. It actually felt like you were going through a legit Victorian mansion. Like this house was decked out. Admittedly, I didn't get a lot of scares in that one, but I, I just think that was luck of the draw. I, I think there were some people in my group who uh, the monsters kind of targeted a bit, not, not on purpose, but uh, still, uh, I was so impressed by that one. Like I had a feeling it was gonna be good. I didn't know it was gonna be that good. So, <laughs> haunting of Erie Estate. Congratulations, you're my new fave. And we are finishing off the night with some sweet Thai chicken tenders and waffle fries. And that, my friends, was my very first visit to Hollow Weekends at Cedar Point. Overall, I really enjoyed this event and I had a ton of fun. It was quite different from what I'm used to over at Canada's Wonderland, though. First of all, the park doesn't treat their haunt as a separate event. So if you arrive at the park in the daytime for all of the family-friendly offerings, you're not going to be kicked out when the spooky stuff starts. Keep in mind that the mazes and scare zones won't open until 8pm, so if you don't want to be frightened, be sure to check out those areas before then. That said, all of the scare zones were confined to the Frontier Trail and Frontier Town. So as long as you avoid the back section of the park after dark, you should be good. Speaking of scare zones, I found it so interesting that there were typical scare zones like Harvest Fear and Tombstone Territory, in addition to Blood on the Bayou and Cornstalkers 2, which were really just outdoor mazes. Like, the flow of traffic was controlled and unidirectional, just like it is inside a maze. The cool thing, however, is that you're able to film inside these attractions because the park just considers them to be scare zones like all the others. So if I end up going back, I'll definitely have to grab some footage inside Blood on the Bayou. I also found that Banished was way bigger than I expected. It definitely felt more like a normal scare zone, but it just kept going and going and pretty well took up the entirety of the Frontier Trail, which is a pretty long stretch. As for the mazes, they were all wonderful. I've said this multiple times throughout the video, but the set design was on point. They were brimming with details, and none of the houses felt empty in terms of scare actor placement. Now, Cedar Point is quite restrictive with the number of people who are let into the maze at a time. This had its pros and cons because you had to wait a bit longer to get into the maze, but once you were inside, you weren't caught up in a big conga line, and because you were in a smaller group, you ended up getting a lot more scares. I also loved how the attendant at the front was also a scare actor who briefly explained the backstory of the maze and gave a few reminders about the rules. I didn't see a lot of shows on this visit, but Cedar Point always does a great job with their entertainment, and the shows I did catch a glance of seemed really good. The park also has a few Halloween themed menu items, but some of these locations were closed. I did come on a Thursday, so they probably closed them because they didn't need the capacity, but it was still kind of disappointing, especially knowing how good the food has been this season. But yeah, I am hoping to return to Cedar Point and Hello Weekends one more time before the end of the year, so if you would like to see that adventure and all of my other theme park, travel, local, and outdoor adventures, be sure to subscribe. 
You can also find me on social media at ADV Parker. As always, big shout out to my patrons for all of the support you guys give the channel. If you would like to support the channel in exchange for some fun bonus content and some other sweet perks, visit patreon.com slash ADV Parker. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, the adventures are calling. There's this like really cute vampire guy. Ooh, I'll let you. <laughs> <laughs>